Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And today I have one of my favorite astrologers here with me, Karen Schroeder from Little Blue Lotus Astrology. And we're going to be talking about the lunar eclipse because it is impacting the United States political scene. And she's going to tell us how. And thank you so much for joining us today. How have you been? Oh, I've been great. I've been great. I'm glad to be back feel like I've been circling the universe on the outer edges with the move, <laughs> but I'm, I'm settled in. I'm, I'm here and I'm ready to talk about stuff that uh, will be interesting for you and your people. Yay. Cause yeah, you just did a big move. So now you're resettled in and we're ready to roll. So yep. we are talking today about the lunar eclipse. So you guys know I'm not an astrologer. I don't even play one on YouTube, but we are having two eclipses. The first one is the lunar eclipse. It is March 25th. It mm -hmm. is probably going to be important for you in your chart. However, it's also going to be important for the United States. We know for a fact because we have the United States chart or else Karen has the United yeah. States chart. So yeah. she's going to tell us because she says, Susan, I watch your videos and all you, what you're saying is in the chart. It's it's right here. It's playing out also in the astrology. Yeah. So tell us what you've been seeing or what you think you're going to be seeing or what we're going to be seeing for this lunar eclipse in March. Okay. So first of all, a lunar eclipse is like a full moon on steroids. Okay. So a full moon is something that illuminates. It shines a spotlight on something. And it's also because it's the moon and the moon has a lot to do with our emotions. It's very emotional. There's a lot of emotions involved in this lunar eclipse. Now, it's in the sign of Libra and Libra is the sign of the scales and it falls in the United States 10th house. The 10th house is the house of public opinion, the house of public recognition, the house of authority. And so for the United States, the 10th house is the fact that we're an authority for the whole world. And also the United States president is the really kind of the, the top guy in the whole world. He's the authority figure over all authority figures in the world. So to look at the lunar eclipse falling in the 10th house, you can tell from watching all of your videos and anybody else's videos about how emotional the country has been. And it's been all out in the public eye, the state of the union address. Oh my God. You know, just crazy, crazy emotions. Now I've got some notes here about the fact that the full moon is also next to very close to the South node in the sky. The transiting south node is also in Libra. So the south node has to do with past patterns that we're trying to grow out of, we're trying to move away from. And the Libra is all about, well, negative Libra stuff is being too nice, being too namby-pamby, letting people walk all over you, not being able to make a decision, and so the United States has been fighting between, you know, the brutality of one part of the country versus the I don't want to make any waves part of the other country. You know, I don't want to really say what I think about. I don't want to say what I think about you saying what you're saying, because I'm too nice to say that. So now we've got a lunar eclipse that's showing a spotlight on this in the 10th house of public opinion and authority. And so I think it has a lot to do with the democratic section of the country coming into being tired of being the nice guy, of being tired of trying to gloss things over and put things in a positive light and just going, no, no, you can't. Libra is also the sign of diplomacy. Libra is also the sign of contracts and agreements. So it's like this other half of the country has to come up with, no, here's the agreement. Here's the contract. Here's the law. And you've overstepped your bounds. And it's not right anymore. It's not good anymore. We're not letting you get away with it anymore. So this lunar eclipse is sort of emphasizing that. It's spotlighting that. And I think... Uh, the uh, 
the orb of influence, which is, uh, you know, how, how long does this uh, influence us? How long does this energy influence us? We've already started seeing it. We started seeing it for the State of the Union address where, um, you know, Biden was cheered and applauded and swept up in this wave of, we're done with that Mr. Nice Guy thing. We're done with letting you get away with things. We're done with turning the other cheek. We're starting to we're starting to move towards the solar eclipse in April, which is in Aries, which is a bold new beginning. So his campaign, bold new beginning of how he's going to do his campaigning, uh, all the things that he outlined in the State of the Union, all those things have to do with the ending of this lunar eclipse of that kind of behavior and paving the way for the solar eclipse in Aries that's coming up uh, in just a few weeks. Um, the positive part of Libra is also equality, a sense of fairness, of coming to an agreement where everybody, everybody makes out okay. So, this realization with the lunar eclipse is that, no, everybody is not coming out okay. Everybody is not being treated fairly. And we're just going to stop doing that. We're not going to do that anymore. In, you know, in your own personal chart, if you've got Libra in your third house and you've got the lunar eclipse in the third house, it's going to have a lot to do with awareness of Gosh, I don't want to communicate that way anymore. Since the third house is about how we talk and how we how we relate to people with our with our speaking and our writing, it's like no, I'm not going to lay down for anybody anymore. I'm going to I'm going to be more assertive. I'm going to be more autonomous. You know, Libra is also all about relationships, right? So relationships for the United States in the tenth house is all about relationships outside the country, relationships within all of us in the country. And it's like, how are we going to, um, how are we going to relate to Putin? How are we going to relate to the other dictators in the world? Uh, with We're coming from a place of strength, not coming from a place of, well, I don't wanna say that and get that person upset with me because I'm too afraid of the consequences. So it's that kind of energy, and we can see it playing out all over the place. I think we can see it playing out uh, even in the states. Um, but it's all about relationships, fairness, and moving from the negative part of, of Libra energy to the more positive part of Libra energy. And also full moons are the culmination. It's the end of something. So remember, it's it's time for us to put an end to this kind of behavior. It doesn't serve us any longer. It, ne it really never has. So it's time to you know move into this spring energy of starting anew and starting strong, starting centered, starting from these are the lines that I've drawn and you can't cross them and meaning what you say. Do you think that the media is going to be better about holding accountable uh, help, you know, standing up and saying, uh, no, sir, you actually said this. You didn't say that. I think there's going to be spots of that. I think we're going to see a little bit more of that. I don't know that we're going to see a major movement, but I think your um, your statement in one of your recent videos about people writing books that it's going to be coming out that way where people are going to be writing books oh. and the publication of the books is going to be very revealing so that the media isn't going to be playing as primary a role okay. as it was before because people are going to be reading these books and forming their own opinions and going, hey, why aren't we talking about this? Why aren't you talking about this? Wow. I want to hear about this. Right. Wow. So what is, so I understand about the full moon and the culmination and the lunation, but how does the eclipse affect this? What is the, specifically does the eclipse do? You know, like I, I get what you're saying, but how does the eclipse part of that lunar thing, how does that change it? Okay. An eclipse is like a branding iron. So wherever, if, if it hits you in your chart in a place where there's really nothing going on, then you're like, what eclipse? 
I didn't hear, I didn't feel an eclipse. If it's hitting you in a place where there's a uh, a con, you know, there's a planet there, there's an aspect there, it's like a branding iron. It's like, boy, it's just going to bring that energy up and sizzle it until you really see it and have to deal with it. In the United States chart, it's not only sitting in the 10th house. Our the natal Saturn for the United States is in the 10th house. So now we've what got well, Saturn in the 10th house is, as I mentioned before, the authority. Saturn is taking the authority. I'm the one in charge. I'm the one that takes responsibility. And in the 10th house, it means that everybody recognizes that, you know, the buck stops here. The United States is the one that kind of drives certain trends and certain diplomatic uh, actions that are happening in the world. Because everybody looks to the United States, especially since World War II, we, we've been the uh, uncontested leader of the free world. So the eclipse hitting the Saturn is like, a, I think, again, it's sort of like, well, who's in charge? Are you in charge or aren't you? You know, uh, what are you going to do about it? And I think that's one of the things that we saw in Biden's State of the Union address is like, OK, you know what? We're done. We're done with this. Uh, I'm the one in charge. The United States is the one in charge. Everybody knows that we're in charge. And so we're just going to we're just going to do this stuff. This is what we're going to do about it. We're going to address this. We're going to address this. We're going to address this. So it's it's a branding iron for the United States Saturn. Wow. Yeah. In Libra, which is about contracts, which is about diplomacy. And you're saying in Libra, like, so something I never realized either is that signs have sort of like lower or higher, you know, kind of expressions. Right. They're expressing the lower part of Virgo might be being critical or being nitpicky. And mm -hmm. the higher part of Virgo might be um, of service, you know? Right. Uh, so you're saying with Libra, the lower part is kind of being a doormat. Yeah. Is yeah. that too? Is that yeah. too? That is, too that is, you know, being too nice, being, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want to rock the boat. And, uh, but the higher Libra is, you know, it's the scales of justice. It's, oh my God. I love you it. know, it's like, you know, Kamala Harris has really lots of Libra in her chart. That's why she was such a great, really? a great, uh, the prosecutor DA. prosecutor yeah. yeah yeah because she wasn't she was she's manifesting that energy at a very high level no we're holding you accountable no you can't do that no we're not going to turn away we're not going to pretend we didn't see you do that or not hear you do that or say that so uh the branding iron effect is on the saturn in the united states chart are we an authority or aren't we who's in charge and what do we do with that authority? What are we doing with it? You know, what decisions are we making? And remember, Saturn is also, when you do something with a Saturn, it lasts a long time. It's like making it in cement. So oh. this is a very critical time for the United States with these eclipses in the 10th house and then in the 4th house in April for the people of the, of the United States. Uh, because what we do now is going to be in effect for a very, very long time. So whatever some, decisions we make, whatever, um, interesting. Yeah. Some, some astrologers feel that, um, that an eclipse influence is going to last from one eclipse to the next. Some astrologers think that it's only for a few weeks. Um, the few weeks is more intense, but then the echoes, that they reverberate for many, many months. And because it's it's hitting the Saturn, Saturn always acts like, okay, we've got it cast in cement now. Wow. So do you feel like, so it's almost like we have to, Saturn is saying, you have to stand up. We have to say enough of this uh, contracts. We, we want you to come together. We need the house you know, to come right. together and pass bills. We need the House and the Senate. We need the American people. We need everybody to come together. Right, right, right. And the and the fact that it's a moon and it's illuminating it is just going, it's just, I think the State of the Union was a perfect manifestation of it because 
you could see how emotional everybody was and you could see how div divided everybody was. It was, it was just out there for everybody to see. You couldn't like say, well, maybe he meant that or maybe she meant that. No, 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 no. It was no, very it was pretty obvious. It yeah. was pretty obvious. Yeah. Wow, that is fascinating. Now, um, in, in the United States chart, it's also squaring the sun and the Venus in the seventh house. Now, a square energy between two planets is a push. Okay, so we've got... The eclipse in the 10th house pushing against the sun and the Jupiter, I'm sorry, sun, Jupiter and Venus in the seventh house of the other people. So, so now we've got this, this pressure to do something about it, to do something about making the law, making people accountable. So, oh, um, there's a push. Yeah, there's a very big push um, and it can have physical results. You know, the lunar eclipse is more of an emotional kind of thing, but a square to all those other planets means that, no, something's going to happen from all the emotion. Something has to give. Something, something has, to, has give. to give. That's what I see. Something has to give here. So the 10th house represents what again? Authority. Authority. Okay. Yeah. Are you, are you, the are you authority of yourself? Um, and also the public eye. So the recognition that the United States is the authority. And the president is the authority. And the but other I, house is other people. I'm sorry. And the seventh and house is other people, right? The seventh house is other people. And, yeah. Can you guys see this? Because I can see it. So it sounds like after the lunar eclipse, there's a real kind of pressure cooker time where some, it's a push, it's a square, uh, where something is going to sort of erupt a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm seeing speaker Jeffries. I just said speaker Jeffries. So maybe that's Jeffries wow. becoming speaker. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing John, I'm seeing a push out of power. I'm seeing a reversal of fortune, uh, somebody's reversal of fortune, um, somebody being pushed out of power. Um, and, and the sense of it's for the greater good. We have right. to do it because it's for the greater, for the greater good. Like good. there's this sense of, this isn't easy to do and maybe maybe it's maybe we should wait but it's for the greater good it's it's i don't know the greater good they just keep saying that in my mind right well the square to the sun is uh it's um it's people being very um very aggressive the moon square the sun is very aggressive and they're they're reacting emotionally to things and but the square to the jupiter and the venus those two planets are called the, the greater benefic and the lesser benefic because the results are usually very favorable. So squaring the Jupiter and squaring the Venus, I think, is one of the guarantees that astrology could say is like, OK, so we have this real uncomfortability where we have to look at some of this really ugly stuff about how we have fallen you know, off our perch and not taken responsibility. But we take the responsibility and these are the results. They're positive, they're expansive, they're generous. They have things that harken back to the past, but the good parts of the past and bringing those good parts of the past forward. Let's be proud of ourselves again. Let's make some effort towards problem solving so that we can all come together again and be proud of who we are and where we live. It's healing. It's gonna heal. It's an opportunity to heal something from the past. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, right. I think it might have to do a little bit with race, with racism, healing some divide. There's something about that as well. Okay, well that that culture. would that would make sense because um, the solar eclipse, which we'll talk about more in another video, but the solar eclipse falls in Aries in the fourth house of the United States, almost right on top of the Chiron in the United States chart, which and is the wound which is the wound, which is in the fourth house of the United States is the people of the United States. And in Aries was, you know, the conquering, the torturing, the killing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the oppression. Yeah. yeah, the oppression. I feel like that's, uh, I'm seeing Native American, I'm seeing African American, I'm even seeing the internment camps of the Asian Americans, yeah. I'm seeing Hispanic, Latino, I'm seeing it all. The whole 
the whole thing of, again, uh, there's atonement. There's an atonement that needs oh, to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's that's the next eclipse. We have a lot right. going on, you guys. Right. Right. So Those I'm actually going to yes. have her come back and talk about the solar eclipse because that's a whole different thing that's mm -hmm. going to be hitting us in a different way. Is there something about... Um, is, am I wrong in understanding that the lunar eclipse is always a certain period of time before the solar yeah they're, they're they're pretty much a couple weeks apart all the time they they really why is yeah. that well you know, like, the solar the lunar eclipse is a full moon and the solar eclipse is a new moon I believe oh okay so there's generally so they happen on those on those things yeah. very auspicious yeah a lot of a lot of power. A lot of power, guys. We've got to, we, the thing is understanding, right? The thing is understanding when you see people like Biden or Speaker Jeffries say, this is it. I've, I've had it. No more, no more Mr. Nice Guy. No more mm -hmm. Mrs. Mr. Nice Libra. Uh, taking we're, off, yeah, you know, they're we're taking off the gloves. We're taking off the gloves. We're going to just get this done because it's for the people. I just yeah. keep hearing it's for the greater good. That's what they yeah. keep saying. This is for the greater good. It's almost like we're taking medicine. That's what, what it is. It's almost like oh. the doctor wants to give the kid the shot. And, and uh -huh. you know, you're like, it's for your own good. You've got to take this medicine. Mm -hmm. That's the energy of it to me. Right. Right. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Because, you know, Saturn, since it's sitting on the Saturn in the United States chart, Saturn has a lot to do with taking responsibility seeing what the problem is and doing something about it and doing something so that you're crossing all the T's, you're dotting all the I's, you're, you're closing up all the loopholes so that it can last. It can last. We're building a better country. Yeah. And then, and then we go into the solar and we're going to be healing our wounds. We're going to be attending to that because we really can't move on without doing that. We cannot move mm -hmm. on without going to our wound and addressing it, saying, I see this. I honor this. Mm -hmm. We're sorry. Mm -hmm. We want to make amends. Mm -hmm. And so that we can heal as a country and we can move forward all as one instead of divided. Right. And come up with a plan. Come up with a plan. Um, and the, yeah, the time is now. The time is now. With the the transiting Chiron in the sky is in Aries. The tran uh, the the natal Chiron in the United States chart is in Aries. Many of us have Chiron in our charts in Aries. So it's like this is the time to heal those wounds. Is so Chiron in Aries? Is that a generational thing? Yeah, it, it can be a generational thing. I think I mentioned before when we talked about Chiron on your on your show that Chiron is 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 uh it's got a very elliptical orbit. So it can be in one sign for a long time and then be in another sign for just a couple of years and then uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it can be quasi-generational. I mean, there yeah. could be pretty good groups of people that have that in that placement. Okay. Right, right, right. Fascinating. Right. I'm looking at my notes to see if I'm forgetting something that I wanted to not forget. Public relations. Yeah. Uh, okay. Here's something else that can be happening with uh, the lunar eclipse in the 10th house of the United States. Intimate personal details of someone's life becomes public. So, row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll, there'll be some drama there. I'm getting that flash of that guy's knees that I saw when I saw the video of the guy oh, wearing the yeah. boxer shorts and all I saw was his legs. Uh huh. And I'm, I'm getting, that's what they just showed me. Like somebody getting the walk of shame, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, they're outside their house and they're being arrested and they're wearing their boxers. Yeah. Uh, so, wow. Yeah. So look, intimate look, details might look, be exposed. Look for that. Look for that. Keep your eyes peeled for that. That's the lunar. Uh, that's, that's the lunar. That's eclipse. the lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When when you've got the lunar eclipse, that's one of the things that could happen when you've got it in the tenth house, and you got your Saturn there. It's like okay, something you've been trying to cover up is broken out, and everybody can see it. All your dirty laundry is out there. 
can you can just can you discover that without having a birth time? Is that one of those things that you can discover without a birth time? That would be tough because the birth time is the one that plots the houses and where so and you wouldn't know Saturn particularly. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody with hairy knees. Ah, God darn it. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm just gonna say, allegedly for entertainment purposes only, that I'm getting a a Johnson kind of name. But I don't know. Maybe I'll be wrong. But that's what I'm getting. Something might be coming out. Some they just said something. I was gonna say something might be coming out, and they said something may be falling out of the closet. Is oh. what they just said. Oh wow! <laughs> so uh, they're not coming out of their own volition. They're falling out. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Somebody, yeah, somebody's yanking open the door and it's just falling. Out. Yeah, yes, like when you overstuff the closet and, uh -huh. and you open the door and it's like stuff starts falling out. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can see that too. Yeah. I don't know. Couldn't happen to a people. nicer guy. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. But I, I think there's many candidates that this could oh, be yeah. a thing for. Line them up. Yeah. Line them up. Right. I, I just saw another candidate for entertainment purposes only is somebody with dark hair. That's a governor that might be a governor of a state in a Northern state in the middle oh. of the country. Okay. <laughs> okay. With a K name. <laughs> okay. We'll play uh what's my line? Okay. Yeah. Oh, Figure you guys out. know her. I know you I know you know her. Her last name starts with an N. Uh and uh she's a governor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I yeah. Oh, yeah, you know who it is. And uh -huh. I always I saw that a while back. I saw some thing with her and somebody else, and I saw somebody else getting somebody else yet uh, pregnant, but that man had a connection to her. So it was just sort of like this kind of, Oh, I mean, I'm just seeing everything. Now I'm seeing, you know, allegedly for entertainment purposes only potentially Bobert. Um, there's a lot of people who could have their uh, dark closets, their doors, you know, thrown open. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think anybody's looking. That That's the funny thing. I don't see people trying to get the door open. I feel like somebody's leaning on the door, hiding, uh -huh. and it's not closed all the way. And whoops, they fall out. Oh, they fall that's out. That's what I see. Okay. It's, it's not through an investigation. It's through a oops. Yeah. And okay. then you're you're kind of and because of the lunation of the moon, mm -hmm. you're 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 kind of like oh, yeah, there's the spotlight. the spotlight. Yeah, there's a spotlight, and you're like, oh darn! It's like there's a party going on, and you're hiding in the closet, and you mm -hmm. fall out, and everybody sees you. Oh, well, they can't the they can't blame anybody. And yeah, you can't blame anybody. And then the media, you know, then there's always there's always. Now we all have phones on our cameras on our phones. So of course there's photos. So yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting. I think you're going to see some dirt being illuminated, um, spotlighted. This is March 25th. Yes. So between March 25th and, and, and the first, second week of April. Well, we could start seeing some of that now. Oh, we can? We oh, can get yeah. a pre-order? Oh, yeah. Get, okay, yeah. nice. This is Yeah, because the energy is building. It's building. Oh God. Okay. That's awesome. So now it's like the 15, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. So we're looking two weeks early. We can, we can that's have about a, when that's about when it starts getting intense. What? I yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> love that for those people yeah. and for me. Yeah. Well, for all of us, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be more fun if, if something happens, right? I think we're all tired of seeing things happen and then nobody doing anything about yeah. it. And I think that's the point of this lunar eclipse. We're tired of seeing things happen and we're, we're tired of making excuses for people. Now we're going to, because of the Saturn, we're going to say, yeah, that we're not going to put up with this anymore. Yeah. You have disgraced the office, whatever you're mm -hmm. out. Yeah. There's somebody's growing a backbone somewhere. Yeah. Saturn is all about uh, restrictions and restructuring. And so, and, you know, drawing the line in the sand and saying, well, here are the consequences if you, if you cross the line. It's tough. 
There's no leeway. There's no negotiating with that. Saturn is a little bit like karma in a sense. It is totally like karma. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally karma, like karma that we run it. from, but we can't hide from. You cannot hide. It's better to just work with it. It's yes. better to work with it. If you don't work with it, it, it gets bigger and bigger in your life. It gets, yeah, it doesn't fall. Yeah. And then you fall out of closet on a lunar eclipse and people take pictures of you. That's what happens. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the things that could happen. So don't be in the closet in the first place. You know? Don't be in the closet in the first place. Yeah, own own your freak. If you if yeah. you're a freak, you just own it. Just start cleaning it out. Get get out there and own it. I think I did a video today where I said that. Where I said if they would just stand out there and say, "Mea culpa, I did it. Uh -huh. I'm taking responsibility." If you just do that, then it it doesn't become this big secret. And grow and grow and grow and grow in energy where yeah. karma, Saturn well, comes along. And I think I think public figures have proven that that's actually been a road to forgiveness and uh, moving on. Yeah. Is when they come out and say, yeah, I did it. Yeah, it was wrong. Yeah, I'm sorry. And a lot of times the public forgives them and uh, they can move on. Yeah. Look at Clinton. Yeah, right, right. True that. Yeah. That's true. Anything else with this um, eclipse, this lunar eclipse, which is March 25th, y'all? Uh, well, it hits Biden in his 10th house. Ooh, okay, hold up. We got to be talking about that. Yeah. What's that mean? His Well, his 10th house, of course, for him is that he is the ultimate authority in the United States and the world. So, so he has to stand up. He has to stand up. Now, it's next to his natal Neptune which means that um, he's got to he's got to become clear he's becoming clearer about his authority and his role as the authority, which is what we saw at the State of the Union address. And it trines the Uranus in his sixth house. So a trine is a, a very positive flow of the energy between one planet and another. And Uranus in the sixth house has got a lot to do with him breaking free of something. Okay, the gloves are off kind of thing. I feel good because I don't have to try and reach across the aisle anymore. It's been a losing proposition since day one. I finally get it. I'm not doing it anymore. So there's a freedom that he feels. And, he, and uh, I think he also feels very optimistic. He feels very optimistic about how things are going to turn out. I think he feels pretty optimistic about the campaign and how that's going to turn out. So that's good. We want him to feel, we want him to feel hope, hopeful. Yeah, we do. And so Uranus is like breaking free of something. And yeah. Neptune represents what? Like Neptune represents, uh, you know, it can feel like confusion or um, okay. there's something that's unclear, like not that he was unclear about his role as president, but there's just like finally the clouds have parted and it's like, okay, I see the path forward. I'm walking the path. I'm doing this. I think it goes back to the Libra thing of contracts. Um, he, he realizes I can't be Mr. Nice Guy and balance the scales. I can't do that here. Um, so it, it works before it doesn't work. To say, boom, uh, you know, we're just going to, we're going to take the clothes off. We're going to get this done. Yeah. You know, whenever any of us have a Uranus aspect, it causes us to be more authentic. Oh. It causes us to be more ourselves. Even if we're, if the, if the self that we become is someone that we never knew that we were. That, that Uranus energy. Okay, I love will, it. I got yeah. it. It's like, okay, you know what? You always it. thought you were this, but you're really this. And we're going to show you how you can be, how you are that. See, and for Biden, he spent how many decades in the Senate being the cross the aisle kind of guy? Yeah. He was the consensus maker. Yeah. He could literally find consensus with anybody, really and truly anybody. Yeah. That's who he wants to be. That's who he that's who he feels mm -hmm. like he wants to be. Uranus comes around and says, you're really a leader, dude. You don't yeah. have to wait for anybody to agree with you. You really know where you're going. You have the experience. You have everything you need. You've mm -hmm. got this cabinet. You've got these Democrats that are cheering you on. Yeah. Now you're going to step into your role as the leader with unapologetically. The words I'm hearing is unapologetically. Don't the waste leader. your time. Yeah, he's not going to waste his time with those people anymore. He's going to get his people behind him. 
Um, and then he's going to stand in the front. He's going to lead in mm -hmm. a new way. Mm -hmm. He, uh, you know, I mean, he, he was falling back on what his strengths were in the past. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think he was he was a, a pivotal person in getting Obamacare passed. Yeah. Um, he was the one that Obama said, hey, uh, after Sandy Hook, uh, you need to get gun control. I'm putting this in your hands. Well, we found that that couldn't happen. But usually that's what he was able to do. And that, and that underscores the fact that he couldn't get it done. It underscores the fact that it's not doable. If Biden can't bring people together, it's not going to happen. It, right? It's not going to happen. Exactly. But now he realizes again, here again, as president, it's not going to happen. I can't bring these people together. We have to lead with what we have. We have to stand up and lead this country with the people that are ready to go forth with me. I can't worry about them anymore. No. And there's way more people that want to go forward with him than there are hanging back. I agree. And I think he's finally seeing that. I think he's finally seeing that. And I think those people that don't follow him are going to rue the day they didn't. Not... Be, be, simply because they're not going to win their elections. Right. They're, they're not going to look well in the, you know, in history, history is mm -hmm. not going to view them. Well, mm -hmm. they're really going to see the air in their ways. I, I get this sense of them a year or two down the road going, I missed the boat. This is really, this man, Biden was a good leader. He was a, a middle of the road. He wasn't, he wasn't at all extreme, I really should have got behind him. It was for the better of the country. I feel like I'm going to hear somebody say that it was for the betterment of the country and I wish I'd have done it. Oh, okay. I hope there's a whole bunch of them saying that. Don't get your hopes up. Yeah. One or two, if, if even just one or two, I, I, that would be something. That would be awareness. That awareness. Yeah. I yeah. blew it. Awareness. I blew yeah. It. And now I see looking in the back in the past, I see it. Yeah. Very interesting. Anything else with the lunar eclipse? I think we might have because of the square to the Jupiter. The positive things about that would be the generosity. Uh, the not so the not so positive things about the square to the Jupiter would be um, uh, religious fanaticism, self righteousness, arrogance. Ooh. So all that stuff might become very prominent in the next couple weeks as well where we see a backlash with the, uh, with the religious, right. Or religious uh, extremism that could extremism, come in, in yeah. other, in other groups too. Mm -hmm. Oh, brother. Right. That's, I don't, I don't feel, I feel bad for Biden sometimes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, Cause he's going to have to just, he, I feel like he's parting a sea of division of, of like, just get out of the way, just get out of the way. I know you have a problem. I know you have a problem. Don't care. I've yeah. got to do this. Right. This is what I've got to do. I can't get distracted about these things. I've got to do this. This is the bigger picture. That's, that's where he's getting his clarity. Yeah. And that's a, that's one of the strengths of Scorpio energy. He's got like what, four planets in Scorpio, three planets in Scorpio. Yeah. The focus the laser beam focus, like this is where I'm going and you can't stop me. Nice. And he, yeah, he is parting the waves. Yeah. Or just digging down deep through all the layers. Or or the other analogy is digging down deep through all the layers, right? Yeah. Just keep going. Yeah. 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 So it'll be interesting. It sounds interesting. It sounds it sounds like it's what we need, the medicine we need. Again, they're talking about this is the medicine you need. You've got the right person. The right man mm -hmm. is leading the country. He's he's going to manage this. And we're going to see some things. But we're, I think we're going to see some good things that are shocking and then some not so good things that are shocking. Mm -hmm. You know, good things in the sense that things are going to fall out of people's closets. Mm -hmm. um, we might see some religious fanaticism. But it's it's worth seeing it all because we need we need to we need to witness it all. We need to we we really really need, need to, to understand yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And then did you talk about Biden's chart? Is it was that something that you covered already? Yeah, I talked about the well. I talked about the eclipse in his chart. I want to remind everybody that the Saturn in the sky, the transiting Saturn in Pisces, is pumping positive energy into those three planets of his in Scorpio. And so Saturn is, is giving him strength. 
It's giving him perseverance. It's giving him the stamina to do this enormous job that he took on. And um, I think, you know, he's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. Super awesome. Yeah. Yes. It's again, what I like to say when I see something like that in somebody's chart, especially somebody who's dealing with all the, all the conflicts and problems and things that can be so draining and difficult. I see that in somebody's chart and I'm like, the universe has his back. Oh, it's nice. Safety net. It's the safety net that the universe is giving him. The universe we got has you. his back. We got you. Oh, that's so good. That's such a great thing to hear. Yeah. That's a great, um, that's a relief, isn't it? That's a yeah. relief. The universe has his back. Very cool. So mm -hmm. if people want to get in touch with you, the website is littlebluelotus.org. Mm -hmm. I'll put all her information in the description down below. You have your own YouTube channel, which is under Little Blue Lotus as well. Uh, Little Blue Lotus Astrology. Little Blue Lotus Astrology. She has her own YouTube channel. And, and I'm going to be putting new ones up, everybody, because... Because of the turmoil in my life the last few months, I've had to put it on hiatus. I think my last video I talked about that, but I'm, I've am i got some new ideas. I'm going to be doing it on my phone. I don't need a cameraman anymore. So we're just going to, I'm just going to start putting out some new videos. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be really good because we need it because we're going through some things. Yeah. And I think awareness is, knowledge is power. Okay. Awareness knowledge is, is power. power. So you really want to know what's going on. And, and I, and she's also a great teacher. So check out her channel and subscribe just because as she starts adding all this stuff, you'll be able to be notified because she's going to be doing some classes too. Um, and she does readings. She's pretty booked up, but check her out for readings as well, because this stuff, astrology is, um, you know, you can get your chart done any time and it can be for the next year or the next six months mm -hmm. so it's such a forward looking forecast mm -hmm. um that's it's yeah. super helpful she's done my chart she's amazing she, you know she's on my channel i think she's amazing and she's going to come back and do a video about the solar eclipse which is completely different so i'm glad you did this because a lot of people are talking about the solar eclipse and not talking about the lunar eclipse so now wow. we've learned a lot okay. about okay biden and about the lunar eclipse and how the lunar eclipse is going to affect the united states and what we can be looking for so when you see something in the news you can remember that karen told you this that you know aha this is the lunar eclipse you know doing its thing right now yeah, you heard it here first you heard it here first everybody <laughs> Wow. Thank you so much, Karen, for coming on. Thanks everybody for viewing this video. Please let us know your comments down below and we'll see you again real soon. Thank you, Susan. You're very welcome. As always, my pleasure. For entertainment purposes only.